Hey, welcome to WatchGuard Wire's first ever vlog post. I'm Corey, and today I'd like to revisit a wire post from last week. Last Tuesday, I wrote a post about two new zero-day flaws in Internet Explorer. One involved the ActiveX animation control, and the second involved the way Internet Explorer parses vector markup language, or VML. Well, unfortunately, the VML exploit has escalated significantly in the past few days. For instance, researchers have already publicly released three new exploits for this vulnerability, including one that allows an attacker to get a shell on your machine. On top of that, research organizations like SANS have noticed e-cards in the wild that actually take advantage of this VML exploit. Finally, a researcher named Aviv Raff found that it's easy to modify these exploits so they get past most antivirus vendors' signatures. So to really illustrate how bad this flaw could be, I figured we'd take a look at one of those three exploits and show you what it could really do. I'll start by heading to a very popular exploit archive site called millworm.com. This site has the three latest VML exploits. I'll go ahead and choose the one that works on XP with Service Pack 2. A quick glance at this code tells me right away that it's a Perl script. If I scroll down a little, I right away encounter something called shellcode. Shellcode is a malicious code an attacker attaches to his exploit to get it to do something bad. In this case, the exploit uses a very popular shellcode from the Metasploit framework package called BindShell. BindShell opens a listening port on the victim's computer so that an attacker can connect to it and gain command line control. In this case, BindShell attaches to port 5555. The rest of this Perl script just consists of code that generates a malicious web page and injects that shellcode into it. So if I close these windows and look at these files, you can see here is the exploit Perl script. And if I run the Perl script, it creates exploit.html, which is our malicious web page. Now I simply have to start a web server on this computer to host my malicious web page. Now let's switch to the victim's machine. So the victim is going to open up Internet Explorer and go to www.badsite.com. This is the URL of the malicious web server I set up earlier. When I go there, it appears that nothing's happening. However, behind the scenes, that malicious web page is injecting the shell code onto my victim's machine. So at this point, if my shell code was successful, the victim machine is now listening on port 5555. Before we move off the victim machine, I'd like to draw your attention to the files on the desktop. They'll become important later. Now we're back to the attacker machine with the victim's machine in the top right hand corner. Using a command line instruction, I'm going to telnet to the victim's machine on port 5555. This is the port my shellcode should be listening on. When we do this, we actually get a Windows command prompt. Our exploit worked. We own the victim PC. Using a directory listing command, I can see the files that reside on the victim's desktop. Furthermore, I can actually delete them. Watch the desktop as they disappear. So as you can see, our publicly released VML exploit code worked flawlessly. Simply by visiting our malicious website, the victim lost total control of his PC. Now that you've seen how bad this vulnerability can be in real life, I'm sure you're dying to know how to protect yourself from this threat. Well, there's good news. Microsoft has done the unusual and released an out-of-cycle patch to fix this vulnerability. They list it under MS-06055. You should download, test, and install it as soon as you can. If you're a Live Security or Live Security Informer customer, we'll post more information about this shortly. We'll continue to post these vlogs from time to time, so if you're interested, watch the WatchGuard Wire. Thanks.